inspiring a league of people who have no idea what they're doing to help. <laughs> Kyle, you can give the mic to Joanna. That is 16, right? Yes, great. Oh, and it's upside down. And it's upside down. <laughs> uh, what, we, <laughs> what are we recording? <laughs> Just for posterity. Right, here we go. Recently, I had the absolute honour of joining a private research team at the Peachy Museum in London. This is Carly, and he has an excellent YouTube channel documenting his journey so far and his research project into the pre-dynastic vases. Vases. Vessels. Now, the goal of the project is to eventually scan as many museum pieces and private collection pieces as possible and then collate all the data and really see on a microscopic macro level any clues and evidence as to how these amazing objects were made is there mathematical correlation between the designs and basically find out anything that we can we were joined by kyle and russ from the brothers of the serpent podcast yeah so we'll we'll take video of a full 360 degree turn mm -hmm camera really nice. lined up to the very bottom and then we'll move up one centimeter at a time mm -hmm. and take another full video for each centimeter that way you get no distortion from foreshortening mm -hmm. from the camera looking up it's always looking straight on each centimeter so then hopefully we can compile that and look at the striations and precision manufacturing expert chris king let's get a value of a change in surface well, this height. In other words, how high is that bump? Five centimeter scales. Yeah. And then I can give you an idea of whether it sounds like that's accurate or not. Because this is really small amount. I need to. Consistent. Oh, yeah. Now, the whole time we were supervised by one of the workers from the Peachy Museum, but she was really lovely and really kind of just let us do our thing. But she was so interested in the point of the research project because she didn't really have any idea about the uh, engineering aspects and the engineering lens of looking at these ancient objects. She didn't know about the hardness of different stones on the most scale and about how none of the tools in the current archaeological record could account for how these were made, that the details of the engineering and the design, that when you scan them and, and you look at it for on like a deep level of mathematics, the sacred geometry that's included in all of these objects, she was absolutely bewildered and she was amazed and she was so interested and it was really, really positive to show somebody from the academic archaeological community who was really engaging and really excited about investigating this weird mystery. Now, the Petrie Museum in London has the now infamous core number seven, which caused a lot of debate over the years about whether or not the striations on the core, circular, spiral or horizontal. But now we're going to know for definite what it actually is because it, it has been 3D scanned and you can't really fudge a mathematical 3D scan because it's legit exactly what it is and they'll be able to pull it out and make a 3D model of it um, or a, and a 2D model of it and basically we're going to put to bed the argument of whether or not this thing is a spiral or whether or not it is horizontal. To also make the data collection as fair and as wide as possible, they also scanned some later dynastic alabaster vases that were very much made to be in the style of the pre-dynastic stone vases. But basically that was the only material that they could make these imitation copies um, of the much, much older design. And you didn't really need the scan. You could see with your eyes uh, just how unsymmetrical and sort of unprecise uh, these later imitation vases 
are, but they are still really cool. Now, it gets a bit complicated because not every pre-dynastic vase is coming out with perfect symmetry and perfect um, evidence for like precision making. They do seem to have like a wide variation of like quality control and design, size, shape. There are also some weird shapes that I discovered, like this weird tubey thing. It's very impressive, but I hadn't quite seen one like this before. Also saw like itty bitty bitty ones that were literally like no bigger than an egg, which were so cute. I wanted to steal it, but obviously I didn't. I was sweating the entire time I was in there. Some of these artifacts are potentially potentially up to 10,000 years old. These were pre-dynastic, found in pre-dynastic graves. There is also something very disturbing that's currently just living in the back of the Petrie Museum. And that's this dude. There is a real dead guy skeleton, um, which I think was dated from about 5,000 BC. And this is how people buried people weirdly in pots although this one is a clay one not a stone one i believe but yeah that person's just chilling in the back of the petri museum still and the museum also has some really interesting pieces and some really good examples of ancient stonework where you can see there has been two separate skill sets at work on the same artifact for example if you look at delicate work that was done around the toenail they could smooth the stone in between the toes and along the feet and just really gorgeous and then when i panned down to where there had been hieroglyphs added just nowhere near the same skill set as the person who made the feet i find it hard to believe that these were both done around the same time in history and i I kind of tend to think that the writing was added. Again, here we've got like exquisite fingernails and polished fingers, polishing in between the fingers and all around the sort of ridge work of the statue. And then on the statue's lap, they've added this very crumbly, slightly crusty writing. And I can't help but think that one is tagged. It's sort of been tagged with the writing at a later date. Because uh, obviously the writing couldn't have come first because the statue has to be made first. So logic lends that the person who made these exquisite fingernails was not the person who wrote the writing. Uh, today in the Pichim Museum, we have been scanning some vases and cores and vessels. Which one do you prefer, vessel or vase? What? Or vase. Oh, to say how to say? Yeah. Uh, we say vase. But they're very cool. And I didn't realize until I saw them. I've seen a bunch in real life, but how tiny they can be. There's some that's yeah. literally the size of an egg, yes. uh, like not even five centimeters. Um, that were my favorite ones because just how you get it that small blew my mind away. Yeah, usually people think it's these are very large vases. Yeah. And there are a few. In a British museum, we found like this large porphyry and mm -hmm. breccia. Breccia or breccia? Bre breccia for what? Breccia, like the material of the vase. How do you say it? Breccia. Oh, I don't know. I suppose the proper pronunciation of that word. Because we were thinking about it, but we don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, the material, because I thought they were made of, is it like the stone? Yeah, it's a stone usually. It's a red, reddish, and you have some uh, other kind of crystals in yeah. this red material. No, no, I don't know. I don't know that one. I'm getting a little bit better at recognizing stone now, and I'm like, okay, that's a granite, that's a diorite, that's a basalt. Um, that's kind of all I know, actually. <laughs> we are trying to work together with uh, some Egyptian museums. Great. To have some real vases with real provenance. Yeah. And we are also on the way, kind of, to work together with Egyptian uh, universities. Nice. So they are kind of helping us to apply for the Ministry of Antiquities. 
Mm -hmm. And I mean, this apply for this permit. And uh, after the permit, we can start the, con uh, the collaboration with the museums and well, also pro potentially with other sites. Well, now like Petri, have, you've done it with Petri, it kind of goes, look, we've, you know, we're legit. We didn't break anything. Yeah, I, I hope so. I hope so because they were really kind and, and they yeah. are really, really welcoming and comforting. And uh, I think they were also happy that we were there and we were doing this experiment. As, as I could tell, or that's what I have been noticed that probably this is well, the, the most uh, thorough research on these vases yeah. so far because they were surprised how much equipment we brought. Yeah, they were like, this is cool. Okay, this is legit. Like, this is a, a legit operation. Um, and you were doing not just the dynastic vases, you were also doing, which I think is totally fair, doing a version of all the other ones, the pottery, the alabaster. Yeah, so we, we did um, scan. So the focus was the, the pre-dynastic hearthstone vases, mostly Nagada from the Nagada period which like roughly 5,000 years old okay and also we are, we are focusing on the pottery ones from the same period to compare the several features circularity workmanship etc because those were found in the same graves mm -hmm. same tombs and um, it's just interesting to see what's, what's the difference probably a lot because she said something today about the Petri Publishings, and that's anyone can access that. Is that right? Petri Publishing. Ah, yeah, his books, you mean? Or oh, I, I, I always, oh, maybe I just assumed it was online. Um, maybe it's book. Because I was, I was wondering, like, what's the oldest pre-dynastic bars they have? Because some of them go back further than five thousand. Yeah, this. A little bit tricky question because they have a collection, online collection, where you can look up these vases and you can search for, or you can search based on the period, based on the the, um, the material, the object type, etc. But you cannot really. So sometimes you find the vase which are not conclusively. I mean, in dating, you can see pre-dynastic and first third fourth or sixth dynasty yeah. so it's like mixed they, they they don't really know exactly when they were made because you cannot really date there i saw in a um documentary uh it was a documentary about atlantis hunting i, th I think national geographic or uh, on disney and anyway this this guy had found uh like not the vase but more of like a kind of disc plate that was amazingly perfection stone carved and they 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 brought it up from the bottom of i think the the black sea so like it was all the way out there um and obviously somebody was taking it somewhere or traveling it trading it somewhere and it had like lobbed off and they and this they he spends his time i think this diver and he just finds all these like treasures and stuff at the bottom of the sea but he found one like there and it made me go but this was a pre hard stone yeah precision or looks like yeah it looked very much like the schist disc okay type stuff but not 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 as um not there in the, the, there's the schist disc which is like the weird propeller shape but then there are other ones which are just more like kind of discs or yeah it's like a ball a big not but yeah like a pl like a platter mm -hmm. like a plate platter mm -hmm. um and he was on the this like diver uh guy had like found it and was like so impressed in with the, the black sea in the black sea middle of it that's interesting and i went okay and so yeah i was wondering obviously there's a lot find found around egypt pre dynastic egypt but i'm wondering how far they traveled so we can definitely put a peg in the black sea and go one was over there yeah there's another connection to the black sea which i don't know how legit is this connection or this information but have you probably you've been in the Osiris shaft, right? Yes. You have seen those two uh, boxes or sarcophagi on the second level. Yeah, the sticky one. Sticky one with the black goo and the other one which is dye site. Yeah. And this, I heard that this dye site, and I'm currently working on a documentation, I'm trying to clarify this information with Egyptian geologists, 
But I heard that this diacite cannot be mined in this quantity in Egypt. Yeah, it's going to be brought from some. It either had to come from the Black Sea region mm -hmm. or the uh, Shinai Peninsula. Mm. Maybe they were doing the swaps. <laughs> I'll so, give you some <laughs> black box. This night. is the second time I hear some... From the Black Sea? F yeah, from this connection. That seems kind of weird. Well, get your snorkel on, get in the Black Sea, and you're going to find yeah, that, treasures. That's actually a dream to, to dive. Yeah. To look under the sea and... I would not be very good at that. I, I could do surface level snorkeling, but I, I couldn't do the... No. One, claustrophobic. Oh, that's so not I'd happening. probably be like, Aah! but also two, medically, I've got I've got bad ears, and um, I'm I'm technically not supposed to put my head under water. Oh, so um, okay. non sized and uh, the pressures. I, I don't think I can do that pressure thing. I'm not I'm not good on a plane either. You know, in a plane when your ears like pressurize, I can't do it. So I'm always having to sit on a plane, and I, and I look like I'm just gurning off cocaine because I'm like. I was trying the whole time to get my ears to equalize and pop. Um, so maybe not. Somebody, somebody offered, and they were like, oh, I know someone in the Azores who's got a submersive. Like, I bet they could, you could take them, you could take you down. They could take you down. And I'm like, no, thank you. You can try this very old uh, diving chamber. Oh, like, no one like that. Like, you can just walk on the bottom. Um, now, I'd watch someone else go down on a monitor happily, but I'm not going down that new way um i can actually survive i'm um, pyramids are hard but i'm okay um you know going down the tiny three foot shafts into descending into um have you been to the subterranean chamber yeah the yeah but luckily we, on our tour i assume like your tour is private so there's only sort of 30 people or so but if it was general i don't think i could do it general admission where you've got all the people i'd be like i'd open. kick a kid or something i wouldn't handle it very well so it's not even open for the public oh no it isn't is it it's a private but but just the general pyramids like the, those yeah, yeah those three foot by three foot shafts that i don't think were like designed for humans to be going in and out of um yeah no i so i can i can handle a pyramid but anything more underwater or um i really struggled in turkey with the underground city derinkuru um, did not cope very well down there. Uh, I, I went in with the idea to vlog and I got sort of the first level and then panicked. <laughs> well, it's, it's even smaller than the pyramid um, shafts because the, the staircases are like, you, you, fiz you can't cross someone at all. So if people are coming down, you then have to back up and people just keep constantly coming down. It's like a nightmare. Mm -hmm. So really recommend. <laughs> I mean, go, go. <laughs> But yeah, that was the tested my and we only went down I think it was four levels and there are eight that are open. Really? I think he said there are eight like accessible. But there are much, much more. But but then there's like so much more that are not open to the public and yeah, you get lost another. Um but there's there's actually randomly about 15 minutes from my house there is this place called the chiselhurst caves which is a huge rat run miles and miles of cave systems um that apparently they think they go oh it goes as far back as the romans but i'm like why the romans i think we'll be a bit older um if if, if like scotland and turkey have this like ancient underground cave system but i've been i've been down and around and um and they're pretty cool it just goes on for miles and miles and it's like you'd never know it was there so 15 minutes from my house but do we know the purpose of that and who built those um it was used different purposes over history so in the civil war it was like a gunpowder reserve like secret they stashed all the gunpowder down there uh in world war Two, it was a a city where everybody lived uh, from the bombs um so they focus a lot on that they were on the tours going around being like and this was the school and this was the but um, but they say that like because it goes on and on and on, and they say that they've got evidence of it going back to Roman times. Sure. Super, super cool. 